Today's quick cast is with Keith Bearfield, who is a defensive analyst now at Louisiana for the Raging Cajuns. Prior to this, in 2019, he was the offensive coordinator at Quincy University, a Division II program. In this quick cast, he talks about the things that are necessary to turn an offense around using tempo. In this first clip, he explains exactly where they were starting with some 12 and 21 personnel, not something that he was used to, and a big decision that they made was to move away from full progression reads to simple key reads, and it helped their offense and was a big part of the setup for success. Um, and so what I'm going to talk to you today about is, is what we did as far as tempo and how we got to that at Quincy last year. Now, at Quincy, it was my first and my only year there. And when I got there, I took over an offense that was perennially at the, at the bottom of the conference uh, in most categories. And, you know, they, Coach Bass, the head coach, was looking to hire somebody to change it up, to come in there and, and throw the ball and spread it out and, and go fast. Now, they had been a 12 personnel, 21 personnel power run game. Not much uh, passing game involved, uh, not very complex passing game when they did have it. And so uh, I, was, I was excited for the challenge. I was excited to get back to two calling plays. Um, I was excited to take what I had learned from the two years I spent not calling plays and then getting back to it and seeing you know, how, much, how much better I might have gotten. Uh, but within about you know, a few weeks of being at Quincy, once that, that excitement kind of wore off, I realized I had just inherited a, a team that's been recruiting for 12 and 21 personnel, and I'm trying to spread it out with four or five receivers and, and throw the ball with quarterbacks who, who hadn't really been a part of a developed passing game in, on, on the college level yet. And so a lot of anxiety came, came about me, and I was wondering you know, if I was gonna have anybody, uh, if I was gonna have a few, uh, luckily, there were more athletes than I would have thought uh, that were more than competent. Most of the quarterback room was ready to play for me, and we had three full groups of receivers that we could that we could win with, and and so that was a blessing in and of itself. And you know, at the same time, still they haven't been a part of a of a complex passing system and nor a tempo system, and so kind of the challenge still was, you know, what. What do we want to do within our system? What do we want to try to teach and try to get down by the fall to make the improvements that we're looking to make? And part of it was, and probably one of the biggest decisions that, that I came up with after studying a lot, calling some buddies, and, and really thinking you know, long and hard on this subject was I wanted to try to eliminate, at least in the beginning, the, the full progression reads for the quarterback. I wanted... Uh, all the drop back pass to be either or. I wanted him to, you know, take his drop, you know, look at an area in the field, a certain defender, and then it was either you throw it to this guy or you throw it to that guy. I didn't want the full action, reaction, and check down. I didn't want to flood their minds with that because I wanted to get to a point as soon as, as, soon as possible to where I had multiple quarterbacks who were competent we could drop back, knew what they were looking at, could make a decision and let it rip. That was kind of the first obstacle that, that we uh, came to was even when they started learning the system and they started knowing the right decision, they kind of threw it hesitantly. And so letting them make mistakes, but make mistakes full speed, you know, is the way that I taught them. I taught, you know, progress through failure. Uh, you know, the quickest way to teach a, teach a three-year-old not to touch a hot stove is let them touch the hot stove. And so that's, that was kind of our philosophy there. The next big decision for their offense was to become a tempo team. And they had specific reasons why they wanted to do that and how they were going to operate. We also, you know, obviously decided on, on being high tempo, being a team that wasn't, you know, every now and then we decide to go tempo. It was our default was going to be tempo. All right. So if we, you know, after a play, our, our guys on field, our 11, were assuming we're trying to tempo. And if we didn't want to, then I'd slow them down. But uh, as opposed to 
we want a tempo at this time, so now we have to get everybody's attention and get them to the ball. And so um, why tempo? Why did we decide to do that? Well, for us, it was, you know, first kind of a, a thing of necessity. You know, we, we didn't have, you know, the right the guys that we recruited for this system yet. We were dealing with guys who were at the, you know, operating at the bottom half of the, of the conference at the time. And, you know, we were looking for a way to find our advantage in a game against you know, teams that, that do compete for conference championships. We wanted to be one of those teams. And we knew that lining up power football just right at your face wasn't something that worked at Quincy for us. So we were trying to find a new, new way of doing things and a new way of making the, it our game, making them play our game. And at the same time, it kind of gave us a niche, a, a thing that kind of got attention from recruits to, you know, if you want to throw the ball around, you'll, you'll come to Quincy and, and have a lot of fun and do all that kind of stuff. But at the same time, you know, we averaged upwards of 90 to 100 plays a game. Now you think about what's the average plays per game for a team, somewhere between 65, 75. So if we're hitting 100, okay, that's what, about 30% of what extra of what you're already playing per game. So we're adding a fifth quarter to the game when you play us. Now, it's for both teams, sure, but – at the same time, we're used to it. That's what we're planning on. That's what, what we've prepared for since spring. And this is your first time playing that much in one game. And so if we can, if we can hang with you the first three quarters and we get into those upper number of uh, a play count, we feel like we've got the advantage on you because we're still going fast and we're still taking it to you. And that's uh, really where we saw the biggest difference in our performance this year. Coach believes that the biggest thing is how this is taught. And he mentions one of the big mistakes he sees when teams try to go and be an up-tempo team. One thing that we, we tried to do, the reason that I believe our tempo was so proficient and so effective for us was the way we taught it, the way we installed it, and the way uh, that we kept teaching it all the way through the season. Okay? One of the biggest mistakes – that I've seen coaches make when I'm trying to teach tempo, whether I'm visiting the practices or whatnot, it's they try to do the same system that's not tempo, make it tempo just by saying, do the same thing, but faster, right? So the coaching point from the sidelines, you know, or practice is just them yelling, you know, tempo, right? That's not, to me, that's not a coaching point. To me, that's not a tangible, measurable coaching point. And the rule of thumb that I always go by is if my, if my mom can sit in the stands and make the same point, then it's not a coaching point, right? Like for receivers, they drop a ball. What's a normal fan going to yell? Catch it. Well, that's obvious, right? You want him to catch it. So you know, change your coaching point to hand placement. You know, see it all the way in. And so we wanted to make our coaching points in tempo measurable. Coach feels a big part of their success is the way that they teach it. And for them, they define it and make it measurable. The coaching points are measurable, and everything they do within tempo has some specific coaching points that are tangible to the players. First off, we told, you know, tempo starts at the end of the previous play, right? So we told all five offensive linemen, as soon as that whistle blows, that, that play dead, you need to be jogging to the new ball spot and get your feet fully set. And what do I mean by fully set? So we, we need to have our feet set. We don't need to be in a stance. We don't need to bend our knees and our hips yet. But your feet need to be set in such a way that when you do get the play and it's time to get in a stance, you don't have to readjust your feet, pick them up, and put them back down. Right? So your cleat should stay in the ground, and you just sink down into your stance from there. Why? Okay, so let's say they're, they're standing there at the ball spot. They get the play, and it's time to get in the stance, and everybody else is ready. Okay, the center readjusts his feet and widens. What's the guards got to do? Oh, they got to readjust their feet. Then the tackle's got to readjust theirs. Okay, tight end, if he's in the core, he has to readjust his. If they had to take a step forward, 
now the quarterback and the running back have to readjust their their alignment. All right, so what does that what does that do? That takes up time, maybe three four seconds. That might not seem like much, but you know, think about what you can do in four seconds. And there's some NFL combine guys who can almost cover 40 yards in in four seconds, right? And so we want to eliminate and shave off as much time as possible. And that's one thing that we we coached in practice, and that's one thing we can see on film is if they're you know readjusting their feet to get in their stance. Okay. So the second thing is for the five eligible players on the field who did not have the ball at the end of the play. We should see, okay, game film cuts off to the next play about two to three seconds after the play ends, right? It kind of plays on for, you know, one and a half to three seconds or so. In that time period on the game film, we tell our guys we should, if you don't have the ball and you have an eligible number, we should see your head snap to the sideline to get the next signal before the film cuts off, right? And so – you know, again, like coaches, we have to be tempo too, right? And so we have to have a signal for them to get in order to make it worth looking. But that's something we can measure on film. That's something we can watch at practice and we can improve on, right? And then the third thing is everybody knows the ball carrier should give the, the ball to the ref to help help the tempo out. But what we what we found was – you know, that, that sideline referee, when he get tackled on, on the sidelines, he's going to ask you for the ball. And what's he do with the ball if you give it to him? He puts it down at his feet, gets another ball in the game from the ball boy, tosses it to the umpire. Umpire kind of takes his time lining it up with the, with the ball the sideline judge put on the ground. And once he gets that ball down, then we pick up the other ball, hand it to the ball boy, and now we're ready to go. And so kind of to eliminate – that extra three to four seconds, we tell our guy, even if he's yelling at you to give him the ball, you just completely ignore that referee. You pop up as fast as you can so we can't get to you, and you run the ball inside the hash and toss it to the umpire so he can just spot it and we can go right now. Okay, and that was that was a major point that we that we worked on every single day in practice. For Coach, the results speak for themselves, and he shares exactly what they accomplished in his year at Quincy University by becoming a tempo team. We broke 14 school records uh, on the offensive side this past year. These are just the highlight points in a season. You can see 30 points per game. Now, that's not you know, something that's you know, outrageously huge uh, for anybody, but uh, you know, as a matter of fact, in my four seasons of being a play caller, that's that's actually my personal lowest. Uh, but the, the point being, if you look at in 2018, they ranked 151st in uh, points per game nationally. And then we bumped that all the way up to 30th nationally in one season with what we did. That's a 121 spot jump for us nationally. Then you go to passing yards in the season. That's the big one. Okay, we, we added – 152 yards per game from the from the previous year and then we jumped 132 spots nationally from 142 to ninth in the country in passing yards per game and then go to total yards in a season adding 128 yards per game from the previous year and jumping 100 spots from 123 to 23rd nationally and so you look that's three of the four major offensive categories and we jumped at least 100 spots nationally in improvement in one season with what we did. And then you look at the tempo step, fastest offense in Division Two. Okay, how do I know that? How do I know we were the fastest? Okay, so I looked at, I looked at a couple of things. Um, first, I looked at time of possession. Out of 166 teams in the country, only two teams possessed the ball for less time than we did the entire season, regular season. Okay, so we were 164 out of 166. But for total offensive plays ran, we were number one in the country in Division Two. So we had the ball for nearly the least amount of time out of everybody. But we ran more plays than anybody in that 
least amount of time. And so if you do the math, it's one play per almost 19 seconds of possessing the ball. But, you know, when we were going as, as fast as we could go, we would we'd be able to snap the ball somewhere 8.5 seconds from, you know, the end of the previous play to the start of, of that next play. Today's quick cast comes from Coach's course on CoachTube, Turn Around an Offense with Tempo. This was the introduction to the course, and much of this after goes into the instructional parts of exactly how they utilize this with their run game and with their pass game, as well as some of the procedures that he fits into this, and he even delves into some of their RPO concepts. It's definitely one you want to check out if you are thinking about implementing tempo into your offense in 2021. You can find the link for the Coach Tube course in the description, or you could go to coachandcoordinator.com and check out the show notes and get the link there as well. Follow all we're doing on Twitter at Coach K Grabowski, and be sure to get our free digital magazine at coachandcoordinator.com backslash magazine. You're going to find some great content in there. Mike Petton, Green Bay Packers defensive coordinator, double mug pressures, Eli Drinkwitz talks about how to put motion back into your offense. We have a glance RPO concept from Brent Dearman at Kansas. And we have position quick hit hits for every single position on the field. Check it out. We have more to come with our next version of this in January, which is going to be even better than the one you see available at coachingcoordinator.com backslash magazine.